G'day guys, welcome back again. I am doing a pour with some new paints that I'm trialling. They are Montmartre Dimensions and it tells you very clearly on the little label there if they're opaque or semi-transparent or transparent. This turquoise isn't opaque. You can see the little circles coloured in there. That means it's not opaque. So trying these out. Um, I'll show you the consistency. Look at that. It's really, really thick paint. So I have mixed this two parts to my usual pouring medium to one part paint. So 70% glue, 30% water and two parts of that to one part of the paint. When I was using my global, I did one to one because it was a much thinner paint. This is more expensive, so I guess it's good that I can water it down a bit, so to speak, two to one. Um, now, I've got my tre treadmill silicone spot on and I'm gonna put three drops in each. In my cups, I've got 60 grams of pouring medium, which is two ounces and 30 grams of paint, which is one ounce, so two to one. And because I've got three ounces, I'll do three drops. That's 90 grams in there. One drop per 30 grams or per one ounce is how I like to do my silicone. I did have to add a tiny little splash of water to the orange. It's always the oranges or reds that tend to be a little bit thicker, isn't it? I, I find anyway. I did trial these paints last week. I don't know if I've put the video up yet. I don't know whether I'll put this video up first or the other one up first. Depends how well this one turns out. If it turns out really, really well and I'm really excited about it, I can't wait. I'll have to post the video, but if it's just ho-hum, then I'll just put the other one up first. Um, that was the other one I did with these paints. Just trialling the blues and greens. Um, no split paint, as um, I did get with the global. That was the global in the same colours. And I wanted to use exactly the same colours so that I could see what the difference was. So that's the Global and that's the Montmartre. I'll just climb up the stairs so that you can... Oops, I nearly fell down the stairs. Okay, so you can see the paint's a bit grainy and it's kind of split in places as it usually does with the blues and dark greens. So that's the Global and this is the Montmartre. So, beautiful cells, nice rings, nice and bright, no split paint. Love it. So, yeah, doing another trial with the Montmart, but in my bright colours, just to see how that goes. And then um, I may switch brands, we will see. Depends how much this is going to cost. I think at a pretty good price, though. I don't know whether the white was just old or what, but it was so thick. I had to um, mix the white three to one. But um, I, I don't know, maybe it was just... It's like, it's like zinc. Yeah, it's just, I don't know, maybe it's just an old tub. Or maybe it's just really, really, really highly pigmented, but I did have to put three parts float troll in the white to get it to the same consistency and it was really lumpy so I don't know maybe it was just a bad batch I don't remember it being like that when I used my other bottle I actually used this bottle for my last pour and then I opened this one so yeah <laughs> it could just be the bottle right back to layering um, I did stir these didn't I I gave them a good stir after I put the silicone in didn't I I think I did I think I did. I can't remember now. Too busy talking. I know, I talk too much. All right, let's do this. Layering my paints. So I'll get two layers out of them like I usually do. 
So half the amount of paint in the first little layer. This is a really pretty turquoise, this one. I'm happy with it. I'm actually happy with the colours from Montmartre. They're really pretty colours. And I think that, um, you know, once I start getting my two litre bottles and start mixing my own colours, that uh, I should be able to get the same colours that I was using with the Global. I should be able to match them. And because it's a thicker paint, um, I can use less paint. So... Yay! Two to one instead of one to one for the same volume of paint, which is a good thing. I haven't got very many colours. I just bought a few paint colours to sample, so I don't have the full range. Um, but hopefully these colours, I'll be able to see what these colours do. I've got more white because, as I said, I had to add more Floetrol to, and not Floetrol, pouring medium to my my white so I've got extra white I started it at two to one oh, this is so thick I had to add more pouring medium I've done oh so many pours. this is my fifth pour today you guys I know I haven't poured like for a week and then I thought oh I want to do this and I want to do this and I want to do this and I've been pouring all day and then just when I think that I've had enough, I think, oh, but I want to try something else. And off I go again back into the studio and do another pour. But like, this will be my last. It's 4.30 in the afternoon now. And I've got a workshop this weekend. So I need to go and make up pouring medium. I've got another day off tomorrow. Today's Thursday. Tomorrow's Friday. <laughs> I know. Just this week. Every other week it's not, but this week it is. <laughs> No, I'm kidding. Um, tomorrow is show day on the Sunshine Coast and it's a public holiday here on the coast. So I've got tomorrow off work as well. So I thought I'll pour today and have fun and then tomorrow I can spend the day mixing pouring medium, mixing up paint because a lot of my paint colours, they're empty and I need to mix up new ones for the students on the weekend. Um, and then I can clean up and set up and, you know, get all my cups and um, stir sticks and push pins and pedal pads and canvases and everything that I need to get organized my little cards that I give everyone with their ratios I spend the day organizing so I don't think I'll be pouring tomorrow because it takes me a long time to actually set up for the class it's a lot of work and then you've got to prep everything and then you've got to clean up afterwards but I do enjoy it even though it is a lot of work sometimes. Now I think I'm going to put a little bit of white in because these two colours are very similar. I'm just going to add a little bit more white and then I can top off with that orange. Plenty of paint here. More than enough. And I'm going to actually torch early and just see what happens with the cells because on that last one, the blue and green one, I did my usual where I, I tilted to cover half the canvas and then torched. But I just want to see what happens with the cells, how big they can get, but, actually, but still stay in their nice shape. I want to see if I can keep them in their nice round shape. So we'll see what happens with that. Because on that green pool that I showed you just before, the cells were relatively small. Oh, and I've worked out a, a way to um, not get those lines. You know how I always get those lines when I, I do my flip cups? Yeah, I've been playing around with it and I've kind of worked out a way of not to get them. So I'll do that. I have made videos on that, but again, I don't know whether... This video will come before those, or those will become before this, not sure. Now while those are sitting, I'll tell you about my colours. So again, Montmartre, Dimensions, Titanium White, uh, Thalo Blue, and that is a semi-transparent. And then we've got this gorgeous Turquoise, which is a opaque. Orange, C, 
semi-opaque. You can see the circles half coloured in. And yellow, semi-opaque. Actually, I should have probably have made them opaque, semi-opaque, like in order. And the um, yellow deep is also semi. Yeah, sometimes I, I do like to alternate between my opaques and semi-opaques. But I wanted to keep my cools over this side and my warms over that side so I didn't get too much green. I know I will get green, but I'm just trying not to get too much. So I've just flipped that over, as you can see, and I kind of did with a swirl. Now when I do this one, I'm going to kind of push it through that one and bring it around so that I don't get that line. Like so... And then this one, oh, I think I'll just turn this one around. And I'll just kind of go through there and come up. Oh, there's a lot of green. Wasn't wasn't planning for so much green, but I knew I was going to get it using blue and yellow. What can you do? It'll still be pretty. Okay, so it's kind of, you know, all melded in together. I've got way too much paint here, you guys. Because I, I ended up with more white, which I've used. I probably shouldn't have used it all. Oh, look at that bright orange cell sitting there. Now let's torch nice and lightly up high. And it just made this paint up so it's going to be a bit frothy and speckly as the bubbles pop. I'm going to start, it, well if I can remember, I'm going to try and make up my paint at night and then pour the next morning. Just so that I don't have this bubbly frothy paint. really thick this paint on the canvas so it's taking a long time for the heat to penetrate and then bring those cells up to the surface. Look at those orange ones. Mm -mm. Delicious. And they're nice and small at the moment which is a good sign. I like my cells to be small at this stage. That way I know that I can stretch them make them the size I want them. Alright, I think that's going to be it. Love that orange on the turquoise. Still lots and lots of bubbles. I can I can see them, but I'm not can't get any closer. Otherwise I'm going to get huge caterpillars and big colonies of cells. So I won't. Let's just move this around a little bit. going to do my usual thing. I'm just going to move it up and down and let the paint move a little bit and I can see what I like and what I don't like. But yeah, way too much paint on here. I'm going to start cutting back my paint, I think. I even need a corner catcher to catch that although I don't oh no I don't want to lose that let me give me a corner catcher oops just a bit of cardboard that I've got it's very yellow I was hoping it would be more blue but it's very yellow cut down on the, the yellow next time go into the corner come back before you let go of your corner catcher. No point having all the paint go down there and you catch it and then you let go of the corner catcher and it all runs off. The whole idea is keeping it there. So that's why you don't let go of the corner catcher too soon. I wonder if my white was a little bit thick still. 
I don't know, I'm just not sure what happened with the white, why it was so thick. So I've got, my cells are still really quite small because I've got so much paint on here. I'm not stretching it. If I was letting a lot of paint go off the sides, um, my, my cells would grow more, but I'm just not stretching them. Maybe I should. I should probably just go over the edge here and let some of the paint actually go and I can stretch my cells. Otherwise, they're going to be really small. But look at those colours, hey? Aren't they amazing? There's no split paint. See, when you've got a lot of paint on your surface, um, your cells will want to stretch with the paint whereas if you don't have so much like up here like this corner is not really moving because it's already been stretched over there so it's kind of a you have to have enough paint to cover everything but you don't want too much paint because then you can't stretch everything out where you and make everything bigger Oh, that's hard to explain. Makes sense in my head, my little pea brain. <laughs> now I'm just checking the composition. I just feel like there's a lot of small cells there and those are quite big. So I'm going to see if I can maybe, oh, look at that. Oh my gosh. Look at those cells. Those colours are to die for. Amazing. If I didn't have so much paint on my canvas, I could probably have more that looked like that without overstretching. I don't want to do too much more to it. She says as she tilts. I just have to be careful I don't lose, leave too much paint on there because it'll be too thick um, and it won't dry properly. I don't like this icky green colour down here. But if I t start moving my paint that way, all this is going to overstretch. Oh, wow, I just can't get over that corner, you guys. He's so pretty. I'm just going to see if I can take a little bit of that icky green off but then half the cells have gone over so the other half is going to stretch anyway so it hasn't really helped not really I think I'll just leave it before I ruin it but hey amazing amazing love it love it I just wish the whole thing could look like that corner there. I think it's just this yellow. Maybe I can cut down on that yellow next time. Mm. Now I'm not going to torch it because I don't want any more little bubbles to come up. Um, I'm just trying to find my little tool. I can't find it. I have to use this one. And I'm just going to some paint on my corners because I miss those so yeah really really happy with this one you guys There's no way that I could have achieved this with the global paints that I've been using at the current time that are just all cracked and separated and yeah but now i had one two three four five six colors i had 90 grams in each 
Um, so that's almost a hundred, uh, 600, plus I had the extra white. So I just had a bit too much paint. I probably had, you know, maybe 650. 550 would have been better. And it's a little bit too yellow for me. So, and the navy, well, not the navy, the phthalo blue, really can't see a lot of it. There's a little bit there. Um, definitely going to do these colours again, definitely. And maybe increase the blue and decrease, I think it's this guy, deep yellow. He kind of took over. But, yeah, really happy with this one. I'll take it down for a close-up so that you can have a little look. It's very yellow. <laughs> um, but it's not about the colour. It's about the testing of the cells. Testing of the paint. Look at that. Look how vibrant those paints are. The cells are gorgeous. They've got rings around them. They're not muddy. They're nice and clear. I've got background colours. And you can't see where the two or the three cups were. I managed to disguise where the cups joined. So happy with that. I still like doing my flip and drags and getting my, my stripies. So I still will be doing those pores, but if I want a background like this, a clear background with the floating cells, then I will do it this way. And if I want the stripies, then I'll do the flip and drags and um, accentuate those stripes. Look at those. Aren't they amazing? So out of the chroma, I did the chroma test earlier today. No, don't like it. Won't be buying them again. Um, but I'm definitely going to look into how much it's going to cost me to change all my paints over to Montmartre. Because look at these results. Just with glue and water. Oh, I have I found a... Um, an acrylic binder I've ordered it I haven't it hasn't arrived yet so I'm going to be putting that in my paints and see how that goes as well see if it'll help to, to flow and keep the vibrancy because you know how sometimes paints dry really dark and dull more so if you're using craft paints but I have found some and um, I'm going to put it into my paints as soon as it arrives oh, I just, look, just found that little blue cell there with the yellow ring <laughs> Hi, little cell. All right, I'll just shut up now. <laughs> I've been talking to, to myself too much today. I need to go and have a coffee. All right, thanks for watching. I'll see you for the next pour. Bye for now.